very healthy, normal childhood in California, and it wasn't until I was 13 that I developed breathing problems. I was misdiagnosed with exercise-induced asthma, which was probably my earliest warning that I had Lyme disease. Around the same time, I was having headaches and nausea. I was tired all the time, and it just kept getting worse. I would go to doctors, and they could find nothing wrong with me. When I got to be 15, that's when I started to get really ill. I started having confusion. I'd get lost taking the bus. I would have trouble focusing in class. I had a lot of pain in my joints and more severe headaches. And the breathing problems continued to get worse. In April of 2008, I could no longer go to school because I was just too exhausted. I couldn't, I couldn't handle even going for an hour. And that was when I realized that there was something really wrong and it wasn't just tired from school. I wasn't, I wasn't normal sick, like with the flu or something like that. There was something really wrong and we just continued going to doctors and they would keep giving me tests and they would keep saying, well, there's nothing wrong with you in this area and this area. And at the same time, I ended up in a wheelchair in April because it was painful to walk and I, I, I just couldn't walk. We traveled to Seattle and saw our first Lyme literate doctor. Uh, we ended up going to Connecticut and living in Connecticut for 10 months, being treated by a doctor who has, a pediatrician who has treated over 10,000 kids with Lyme disease successfully. Uh, we began to see glimmers of the old Nicole coming back. She's got a long way to go still, but she is improving. Um, there are still some things that haven't resolved, but she no longer has seizures or blackouts. Uh, she can read and write again. She, can, she got her speech back. There's many, many improvements. Um, she has lab tests from two different uh, labs and five different uh, Lyme literate physicians all the way from Connecticut to California to Seattle. If I'd been diagnosed with Lyme disease quickly, more quickly than, say, five years that it took me to be diagnosed. I would have needed a, a very short course of antibiotics and would have almost certainly recovered 100%, but once the infection gets so deep inside your body, it's very difficult to rid yourself of it. It's, it's sort of the doctor's problem, <laughs> and we haven't been able to find the perfect solution in government or dealing directly with the Provincial. doctors, provincially, but just having someone who wants to help you is, it just means everything. We went to so many medical professionals who just, just didn't have compassion. And in order to get better, you need someone who's feeling and helpful. Give it a shot. Yeah, someone you can trust. We met Lana in 2009 after we came back to the island, and she was very interested in our struggles because she knew of other people that were experiencing mm -hmm. difficulties, and she had information. Um, that made her think about what was going on with Lyme disease here. She set up an informal meeting with MLAs in the legislature. It was fantastic. Um, Nicole was able to speak. David Coverley was able to speak. Lana was. Um, they were listening. There were 35 out of the 80 or so MLAs that showed up. Very, very informative. They asked a lot of good questions. So that was sort of the beginning of, I think, knowledge um, in this area mm -hmm. and not people and, and people not accepting the status quo that Lyme disease doesn't exist here, you know, people aren't sick, they're crazy. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I think that was these people got it. They got the message, they were listening and um, And Lena's so compassionate. Yes. She can't see injustice without without wanting to do something. It's just who she is. And that's pretty special. 
Atlanta has gone to a number of different lime forms from here to Duncan. Um, we haven't necessarily participated in those because we were maybe away or something like mm -hmm. that. But I know that a lot of other lime constituents know about Lana and, and she has endeavored to help them also. One of our biggest problems in the beginning was that nobody had heard of Lyme disease and they had no idea how debilitating it could be. When I first got sick, we would we would say, oh, I have Lyme disease, and people, people would ask us what that was, they had just never heard about it. And awareness is so key, because if we can prevent people from contracting the infection by telling them to tuck their pants into their socks, to wear bug repellent and to stay away from the tall grasses and in the middle of the path, that sort of awareness could prevent future people from contracting the infection. Thank you.